Okay, uh, you folks were asking and asking for a while now for railed gas tubes and top covers. Well, I'm halfway there. Uh, the top cover thing is an ongoing development issue. Uh, finally got the bar stock in to make some railed gas tubes. Um, only did the ARMs or ARs, either or, and the shorter SAR lengths. Um, kind of got real picky on these. The, uh, the specifics is 6061 T6 billet bar stock. And we cut them and then sent them out for mill spec hard anodizing. All right. And basically, <coughs> comparatively on the weight, if I made a steel rail and put it on a standard gas tube, I know it's at least half the weight, okay? But the specs is where I really got picky on. This is a Sacramento Armory IMI receiver. That is a SAR factory barrel from a takeoff gun that I put this together for a gentleman. And this is my one of my 308 action arms guns. And of course it's a, you know, AR. And I took these over to my guy and I said, look, this is what I want these things to fit right out of the box. If someone's got an Action Arms or Sacramento Armory and their barrel gas block alignment is a factory, I want them to be able to take these and put them on there with no work, no fitting. The other thing I did was, I'll just have to show you guys. One of the things that always irritates me when I'm cleaning the rifle, especially a Galil, is if I strip it down and I go to clean it, you know, the gas tube doesn't fall off on the original guns, but, you know, with parts kits the way they are and the mileage and all that, plus, you know, U.S. receivers, whatever, these tend, tend to just fall right off. Well, IMI put a spring in the bottom to help keep it locked in here, but they also made this pretty tight up on the flange here for the gas block. Well, we didn't want to go the spring route. Of course, there's no spring on the bottom. So what we did is we took this to minimum clearance on several new gas blocks that I have. And basically, see how that just locks in? Just like that. Okay, there you go. So basically, you know, that, that was kind of what we were shooting for. And that's what we ended up with. Now, the disclaimer. Because of wear and misalignment on the U.S. barrels and etc. Um, you may or may not have to fit one of these if you buy it to put it on your rifle. And the way I recommend fitting these is, is if the gas tube doesn't slide on and stay in place, Take your burr on a Dremel tool and just go around this diameter as evenly as you can about the same distance in on the flange. Okay, just do a light pass, try it. Do a light pass, try it. But when you try it, make sure it's slotted in the receiver and you put a good amount of thumb pressure on the back of it because you want this to be snug. So if you go too much, it's not going to stay in, in place. All right, yeah, well, like I said, we are in a workshop. I should have turned that off. Sorry for the racket. Um, yeah, and the other problem with lengthwise, because what you want, over here, what you want to check is pretty simple. All right, at the rear of your receiver trim in here, you want this flat to be flush with the ear on the trim. If you're sticking back, you're going to have to machine some metal off the front, okay? But unless the shoulder right here on the barrel where the gas block presses up against is too far to the rear, which I've seen it happen, um, but if it's too far to the rear, what you'll have to do is put this in a mill or a drill press and face this off right across here, okay? And a quick and dirty way to check that is to put it on here, make sure it fits there, and then take you a depth caliper 
and do a plunge where you are on the gas tube there and you plunge to the ear. And that is literally nothing. That is like eight, <laughs> eight tenths. So if you have 10,000 sticking out on your calipers, take 10 thousandths off the front. Okay, 20, whatever. And when you're done, be sure you deburr that edge because you don't want it to hang on there and be a pain in the butt to get off. If you have to use more than just the wood on a little pecking hammer like that to take that off, this is too tight. Okay? Um, please don't hit these with a punch. They are, like I said, mill spec hardened and they will kind of fracture and burr up and booger up and, and then it's going to look like poo. Um, so yeah, there's, there's the solution for you guys wanting to put a EOTech or an optic or whatever at the front and uh, at the end of the day I hope everybody has an easy install but that's how you fit these do not or you should not have to grind on these ears that go in in the receiver do not grind on that flat because that goes in this pocket and stops it from over travel okay one thing I've noticed the clearance cut here for the retainer on the front these work great on ARs, ARMs. This one works great on the SARS. If you have a South African handguard which puts this retainer further forward, you're going to have problems because you'll need this cut way up here. And doing that is on you. Um, right now I have no plans to do them for South African parts, but that could change or could not. All right? So this is just a little, little wisdom video for fitting these things and installing them. Like I said, if you've got a factory gun, it should go right out of the box and right on. And if you've got a plunge, you may or may not have fitment issues. I do not know because I don't have your particular rifle sitting in front of me to, to review. Okay, so there you go. And uh, anybody looking at buying a railed gas tube, you know, check mine out, see what you think. If you want to try one, please do. And if you got any comments, feedback on them when you get them. Hey, let me know. Maybe there's some changes that need to be made. Maybe not. All right.